Hello, my name is Dr. Jose Luis Ruiz, and I'm the director of the Los Angeles Institute of Clinical Dentistry. And it is a pleasure to share with you this technique of the month from dentistry today. And the subject is very important, managing polymerization, shrinkage, and stress. We all know that composites shrink from 3 to 5%. And without managing the polymerization, shrinkage, and stress, uh, it could end up causing post-op sensitivity, it could cause uh, open margins, crack enamel, and other things. So managing since, uh, this stress and this polymerization shrinkage is very important. I would like to share with you a live presentation on the technique, and also I would like to share with you what the research has to say about this subject. So in order to have success with posterior composites, it starts with proper preparation. Supragingival minimally invasive preparation is key to success. You see on this slide right here, there are no specific outlines, enamel preservation. The, you know, it's very important that the preparation is done correctly. So research is very, very clear that polymerization shrinkage and stress can have very negative effects. And there's tons of research in the literature right here. You see just a few of them. Uh, the, the, the problem is there's, there's controversy uh, there's people that, that have different opinions, so so it's hard to really understand what is the most important thing. Uh, the bottom line is what we we do know is there's this three primary approaches to minimizing stress and, and shrinkage. And the first is by the use of liners and restorative materials that have lower shrinkage or lower stress, or both, by incremental filling and by the decrease by decreasing stress by having a specific curing protocol. Resin modified glass cyanamide liners is, is, are very, very successful. I did a study published in the Journal of uh, Research, and in this journal, um, we established that resin modified glass cyanamides have a much lower module of elasticity, and in our research study, we found them to be extremely successful at minimizing the effects of shrinkage. Bulk fills are materials that are more modern, you know, dental manufacturers have developed this specifically with the goal of minimizing the stress. They have a lower module of elasticity and um, they, they, they are successful, they do work. Uh, the results in the literature are inconclusive and really the primary problem is that we're using them incorrectly. We, we tend to use them and fill the entire cavity and that is not the goal. Incremental layering is important, and the literature also shows that the value of that, but at the end it also is inconclusive in it, whether this is the, the ultimate answer. We know that it's important, we know that, that there is no consensus, and, and also uh, we know it's important. So using a practical and logical approach that takes all those three things into consideration makes a lot of sense. So uh, the general rules is that we want to avoid doing increments that will include enamel and dentin together. We want to do dentin separately and enamel separately. We want to, when we do the cures in between each increment, we want to minimize the, the intensity of the light. And in between cures, we, we want to wait about two minutes to allow for the stress to occur. And that is based on research because we know that the first two minutes are the, the, where the most of the stress occurs. Uh, so based on this, I'm gonna share it with you this technique. As you can see on the video, we're applying the second layer of Clearfill SC Protect. And after that, we're gonna cure it for one cycle. The next increment is going to be, or the first increment is going to be a bulk fill venous flow and we're not gonna bulk fill the entire cavity. We're gonna use it as a liner, as a thick liner. We're gonna uh, do an increment of about a millimeter and a half, and we're not gonna fill the entire box. We're just gonna running along the cable margins, and then we're gonna cure it. And we're, we're I'm keeping the light about 10 millimeters away because I want the intensity of the light to be decreased. Then after that, we're going to apply the next increment. The next increment is, um, is, could be whatever your favorite restorative composite would be. 
And uh, we a lot of times I like to use a, a dentin, uh, a, a slightly more opacous material, which is, uh, you know, to cover the darkness of the tooth because sometimes we're working on teeth that have uh, affected dentin and that's a little bit dark. And as you can see right there, I'm spreading the composite. It's, I'm not packing it. It's not, it's not amalgam. The motions are lateral motions. The motions are spreading motions. And I'm spreading that composite in the cavity. And I'm making sure the composite is not going all the way into enamel. Uh, now I'm curing the composite. Uh, again, I'm keeping the light you know, about 10 millimeters away from the composite. And the purpose is to decrease the intensity of the light uh, to, to minimize the stress. Uh, then the next increment is a enamel material. And at this point, again, I'm using a round-ended uh, condenser to spread the composite, not to pack the composite. And immediately after that, I'm using an acorn. These are instruments. This acorn has a very ideal design. This is a, an instrument that I designed a few years ago. And it, it gives you, as you can see, it gives you a morphology very, very quickly, and it gives you a deep morphology. And the benefit of having a deep morphology is that it actually separates the the you know the cusp, and and we can even use the explorer to deepen those grooves. And the benefit of that is by doing that, we also uh, decrease the stress because we separate the cusp by by you know creating beautiful morphology. So it has a double purpose. And then after that, we will do a final, you know, a cure, an increment cure, not a final cure, just an increment cure. It's still is slightly far away from the from the composite. After that final increment, we're gonna cure, then we're gonna trim the excess, do initial finish, then we will do a final cure, complete cure, then check the bite, and do a final polish. It's been a great pleasure sharing this information with you and I wish you a great day.